Yo, it's Bo. Welcome back to Kerbal Complete and Kerbal Space Program. Today, we're going to do a mission to the Eris analog from the Minor Planets expansion mod called Ervo. It's a really cool dwarf planet. It's actually the reason why I wanted to include Minor Planets expansion in my series in the first place. It's got a really spooky atmosphere vibe, and it has some really interesting equatorial lakes of liquid oxygen. So yeah, it's got some really interesting environments to check out. This is my interplanetary craft that my launch vehicle is going to be taking up into orbit. This is going to carry us all the way out to Ervo using a nuclear engine. Yeah, so here we are on the launch pad just lifting off the surface. This is kind of my typical setup, a Saturn V style booster with some solid rocket boosters on the side to get a little bit extra thrust. We're starting our gravity turn here and breaking through the cloud layer. Just broke the sound barrier as well and just detached our solid rocket boosters. Looks like they smashed into each other behind us. But we're breaking through the thicker parts of the atmosphere, trying to coast up to our apoapsis where we can begin our circularization maneuver to capture into a stable orbit around Kerbin. Now we can go ahead and set that up with a maneuver and finish that circularization burn. All right, we've circularized into a stable orbit. Now we're plotting a maneuver to escape the Kerbin system. This will put us on a roughly circular trajectory around the sun where we can more easily plan our transfer out to Ervo. But we just popped open that fairing and we can see our interplanetary vehicle now. And we inflated the centrifuge that I've included. It's that ring thing that when it spins, it provides a sort of centrifugal force. Uh, that kind of gives the crew a simulated feel of gravity. But now what I have to do is get my lander and re-entry pod uh, detached from the front of the ship and dock them to the sides of this four or yeah four point connector uh, part right here. So I've set that docking port as my target and uh, kind of stupid. Although this lander has RCS engines, I forgot to add any RCS fuel. So I had to perform that old docking just with my liquid fuel engine. That was kind of difficult. But here we are just docking the re-entry module and that finishes up our setup of our interplanetary vehicle that we're taking all the way out to Erbo. And just before we start, I want to give you guys a quick tour of the interior of the ship using the mod Free IVA that allows you to like freely traverse the interiors of your spacecraft. It's a really cool mod. You guys should check it out for sure. But first, we're going to check out this inflatable habitat module on the end of our ship. Looks like we've got one of our crew members in here already. It's got some bunk beds on the wall and looks like a little science or kitchen area. Not sure, but... Yeah, this is the first, I think this is the largest living space in the ship. And through this hatch is a tunnel that runs along the spine of the spacecraft through some of the uh, tanks that are attached radially around it, the fuel tanks. And at the end of this tunnel, we can enter our centrifuge. So it's got this spinning hatch here. Once we open that and climb down the ladder, we're kind of in the centrifuge. So the centrifugal force of the spinning ring is pulling us towards the bottom of the inside of the ring, which gives us kind of like this really cool uh, simulated gravity. Looks like there's another one of our crew members. We've got some bunk bed areas, some uh, science equipment, a little lab area. Looks like we got general relativity up on the board there. But I think through this hatch, we've circled all the way around the centrifuge and that's just about it for the interior of my spacecraft for today. So there's your little tour. And we're cruising out of the Kerbin system as we speak. And so once we've exited the sphere of influence of Kerbin, we'll be on a circular trajectory around the sun like I was talking about earlier. I've just set Ervo as my target. And the first maneuver I need to do is to match inclinations with Ervo. So I've got that maneuver set up, but I should talk a little bit more about Ervo real quick. So Ervo is a dwarf planet out in the Kuiper Belt region of the Kerbal system, past Plock, the Pluto analog from the Outer Planets mod. Ervo is supposed to be analogous to the real world dwarf planet called Eris, past Pluto. It was discovered after Pluto and the discovery of Eris led to the demotion of Pluto as a major planet and led to the new designation of dwarf planet after scientists figured out just how many of these Kuiper Belt dwarf planet objects there would be out there. So yeah, that's kind of an interesting fact about today's mission. The dwarf planet that we're going to today could be called the Pluto Killer or Plock Killer if you have Outer Planets Mod installed. So we're just starting our massive 
almost 3,000 meters per second of delta V burn all the way out to Ervo. Since it's so far beyond uh, Plock or even you know the outer gas giants, it takes like at least 100 years just to drift out there on a high efficiency Hohmann trajectory. So that's gonna be a big weight for our Kerbals, but we've got a nice flyby set up and we're gonna be warping ahead to our mid-course correction burn where we can make sure that we're gonna be entering the system as we want. So I'm just executing that maneuver now, and then we'll be able to warp ahead till our entry into the Ervo system, hopefully in the next century. So we've got our flyby all set up and we're warping ahead till we've entered the sphere of influence of Ervo. It looks like it's taking over 100 years just to fly out there, and it ended up being a 140 year transfer all the way out to Ervo, which is dead ahead with its small moon. And we can begin to get our first looks at the equatorial liquid oxygen lakes on its surface that we're gonna be exploring today. Ervo, in my opinion, is the coolest planet in the Minor Planets expansion mod and is the main reason why I wanted to include MPE in my Kerbal Complete series. And we've just captured around Ervo. I'm excited to finally get to see what it's like on the surface after this whole series. But for the next few scenes, we're gonna study Ervo from orbit. So I'll stop yapping, let you guys enjoy the view, and I'll get back to you guys in a second. Okay, so we're getting ready to land. So I've got to lower our orbit down to the altitude just above Ervo's atmosphere. And we've transferred our Kerbals into our lander and detached from the mothership. And we're going to burn away retrograde and lower our periapsis into the planet. So we'll put ourselves on a collision course with the planet. We're gonna be trying for a precision landing today. We're trying to land close to the shore on the edge of this liquid oxygen lake. So hopefully we can stay on target. My orbital speed currently is less than 400 meters per second. And I only need about a thousand meters per second to have like a really safe buffer limit for the amount of fuel that I need for my return to rendezvous back with the mothership after our exploration is over. But it looks like we've got a nice trajectory here to land on the shore near some of these craters. And hopefully I can get a spot close to the shoreline. I think I'm gonna touch and go real quick just so I can get a quick save down uh, on the surface. But I found a really nice flat spot over by the shoreline that I'm going to hop on over real quick and uh, try not to crash. There's a much flatter spot just on the edge of this hill that I'm aiming to land at. The surface scatter on Ervo is really cool. It's provided by Parallax Continued and a config that I'll include in the description. But just one quick final hop over and then that will be our final landing spot for today. All right, this is our final landing site for the mission. And now that I've touched down, we can get our Kerbals out from the lander and put boots on the ground for the first time on the surface of Ervo. Okay, we've put our first footsteps into the ground on Ervo. And that's our sun way back in the distance there. It's super small from out here. We got to plant a flag as per usual and begin our surface exploration of Ervo. So we can do some experiments. You guys can pause those if you want to read them. They're actually super interesting because the weather state of Ervo is really peculiar with its liquid oxygen lakes. It has to be really, really, really cold for oxygen to uh, be in a liquid state. And judging from the science readouts and Ervo's elliptical orbit around the sun, it looks like there's some temperature variance and there's oxygen existing in a gaseous form in the atmosphere as well. And also as a solid on the surface, you can see some icebergs 
uh, floating on the surface of the lakes. So it looks like the average temperature on Ervo is just sitting at that limit where uh, liquid oxygen exists in a gaseous form and a solid form. That's really interesting. I don't know what's going on there, but it certainly makes for a very alien environment. Here we are taking a dip in our liquid oxygen lake. I want to check out these icebergs here in the middle of the liquid oxygen lake. So I've taken my EVA jet pack all the way out there. The gravity on Ervo is I think less than a tenth or about a tenth of Kerbin gravity. So it does the job just fine. I gotta slow down. Actually, oh, we came in a little bit hard. Looks like we're gonna fall back into the water. Not water, oxygen, I should say. Uh, but we can climb up the side of this iceberg. I guess it's not an iceberg. What would you call an oxygenberg? I'm not sure. The surface of the liquid has some really interesting reflections from the sun that I think is kind of cool. We're just checking out the view. Okay, let's get headed back to the lander and our other crewmates over on the shore here. I think we're coming in a little bit too fast once again. Oh, another happy landing. Uh, looks like you can kind of see almost a reflection of Ervo's moon there on the lower horizon. But after the sun sets is when things get really cool. Ervo's got this really moody feel or kind of alien vibe after the sun sets because the reflectivity of the liquid oxygen gets kind of otherworldly and uh, there's still some atmosphere haze but it's still dark enough to see the galactic arms of the galaxy in the sky which is really cool and the stars as well so we're still going to do some more exploring during Ervo's twilight i want to check out the lake one more time now that it's dark and there's Ervo's moon in the sky in the back there i wish i had packed enough fuel to visit it this mission but because it looks so cool but i guess that'll have to be another time i wonder what makes the color of the liquid change so much after dark that i, I don't know if that's an intended feature or what it kind of almost looks clear or like a very icy blue or white uh wonder if that's on purpose but it, it has a really really cool vibe i really like it you got to stay on ervo till after the sun goes down for sure all right it's time to head back to the lander and wait through the night and then in the morning we will get started on our rendezvous back into orbit to meet up with the mothership lifting off the surface just now and raising up our landing gear we're starting our gravity turn actually a bit early i'm burning at like 45 degrees because ervo's atmosphere is incredibly thin i think it's like not even 1% of Kerbin's atmosphere. So it should be fine if we begin our gravity turn fairly soon. And the apoapsis that we're aiming for is about 44 kilometers above the surface. That's about where our mothership is orbiting. We'll drift up to our apoapsis and complete our circularization. And now that we're safely in orbit, we can work on setting up our inclination matching maneuver relative to our target and working on getting those close flyby maneuver nodes right on top of each other. I guess they're not maneuver nodes, but what do you call them? Close flyby nodes. Anyways, now that we're close by the mothership, I've uh, killed off our relative speed and burned towards the target. There we are drifting towards it in the distance. I'll have to kill off my uh, speed once again and burn towards it. Looks like we we're a little bit off but it looks like we're gonna have a really good rendezvous here. And because I forgot my RCS fuel for this lander, I have to perform the docking with just our liquid fuel engine. So that's a little bit difficult, but using the nav ball makes it a lot easier to make sure that your prograde is lined up with the target. That's a lot easier. That's a maybe a better method of docking to go by. Fly by the nav ball anyways. Okay, now that we've got our Kerbals transferred inside the mothership, we've actually let that lander go because it's dead weight at this moment. So we just burned past it. We're gonna leave it behind in orbit. 
it's kind of like littering, I guess, but it takes like a hundred years for anyone to get out here. So I don't think anyone's going to notice it anytime soon. And we've exited the sphere of influence of Ervo in a retrograde direction relative to its orbit around the sun, which will put us on a really elliptical orbit around the sun with a periapsis dropping down uh, near the altitude of Kerbin's orbit around the sun. So that's helpful to set up a return trajectory. And since we're so far out, there's a lot of adjustments that we can make to make sure that we can get a uh, encounter with Kerbin in less than one orbit. So that's going to be good. And we're just drifting out of Ervo's sphere of influence now. And I'm working on getting that encounter with Kerbin set up. So I've had to correct my inclination and just play around with the retrograde and radial in and out nodes till I've got an encounter with Kerbin. It was actually pretty easy. So we're just uh, working on that burn now. It's not too expensive and we've got our encounter. So I'll set up a mid course correction burn to make sure that our trajectory through the system is what we want. I'm going to be aiming for like a 30 kilometer periapsis above Kerbin, which will thread us through uh just like about the middle of the atmosphere which is actually what i'm aiming for because i'm going to detach my re-entry pod and it has a really nice heat shield on it that can take the uh re-entry forces from interplanetary speeds uh to bring us safe and sound down to the surface so here we are back at kerbin 281 years after we left dang that was a super long mission uh, but that's what happens when you go so far away on just these super high efficiency home and transfers. And so we've detached our re-entry pod from the mothership. I'm actually going to have to RCS away from it because there's about to be some fireworks. But yeah, so here we are re-entering the atmosphere. We've got the excellent Firefly re-entry effects mod going on right now that adds the much improved re-entry heating effects to KSP. That's one of the uh, great parts of KSP2 that I missed until Firefly brought it back to KSP1. So I would definitely recommend you guys getting that. Now that we've killed off most of our speed, I've opened up our parachutes and we're drifting down to the ocean where we'll make a nice splash down, safe and sound back from Ervo and our two and a half century long mission. I guess it was a bit more than that. Um, anyways, that's going to be about it for today's mission, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you want to see more Kerbal Space Program missions like this. And I'll see you guys next time.